Harold uh, and um, Leo worked uh, together on this, but it wasn't actually part of the Fender Company. It was their own little side business that sort of went into the Fender building. We had a, they had a full machine shop, for instance, so Harold could make different tone bars or whatever he wanted. And um, um, the company that was founded was called Cleftronics. Leo had this company called Cleftronics. And that's where the purchasing and tooling and everything uh, was funded from. And uh, in 19, I think it was in August of 1959, it became Fender Rhodes. And so I have somewhere um, when they opened uh, in the Fullerton branch of Fullerton uh, Bank, um, the first deposit in 1959 for $5,000 which is an incredibly large amount of money back then. And um, so it was founded then. And I have some in invoices that say Cleftronics on it, and it had different machine parts on it and everything. And it's crossed out on this one, and it says Fender Rhodes. So we started. When Rhodes uh, uh, was sold to CBS, pr prior to that sale, Leo had to um, buy the one share of stock um, from Harold, which uh, was 76 cents, to uh, have uh, co complete control over the company. Um, Columbia Broadcasting Systems uh, were concerned about Rhodes because um, uh, it, uh, with some legal issues uh, and it not quite fitting in, you know, it was sort of Harold and Leo's side project, um, the deal almost didn't go through. So they had to do all of this uh, stock paperwork, transactions and everything. And then it was uh, uh, transferred all to Leo and Leo transferred it to CBS. One guy said, uh, you know, every Rhodes plays differently. And I said, well, uh, first it depends on who's setting it up because we had these sound booths and they would, the pianos would roll in. And it was a little air conditioning thing in there and they'd test them whatever. But um, there was time periods where they didn't quite have, um, uh, they had good keyboard musicians that could, were good techs, but they tended to have other um, uh, uh, hobbies on the side that they would bring in. So uh, if it was whatever uh, chemical, let's say, uh, it could definitely change the way from one piano to the next. But Harold was always overlooking quality and that was so important to him. We put a huge amount of capital in, into R&D to try and come out with a, a, a piano that we could be proud of. That was the Mark V. But uh, after the EK-10, all these plastic keys, all of this, synthesizers, the DX-7, which clobbered every other synthesizer and, and Rhodes and everything, um, pretty much took the Rhodes off the map. And the problem was, since there was no sales, um, that there was no budget. And uh, so they kept trying to put, infuse money. They were getting the harps assembled in Mexico and, and bringing them back and forth. And um, the piano had been off the market for about two years. And when the Mark V was introduced in 85, um, people, old people that were used to playing the roads liked it. They liked the feel. They, they liked the new improved action. But that's it. They already had roads. You know, they still had Rhodes pianos and then all the synthesizers. So it was the end of it. They just didn't sell.